Hi everyone, I'm Scott Stokely and I'm here with one of the, I started to say up and coming <laughs> pros, but that makes it sound like you're not already good, which <laughs> I, I didn't mean it that way. I, uh, you're a top touring pro, yeah. but on the cusp of breaking through and winning majors pro. For sure. There, there's, uh, what would you say about maybe t like 20 of you that are just like just that one tick right behind? Yep. You got two pieces of the puzzle, just need that third puzzle. Okay, <laughs> Jordan Castro <laughs> uh, from Minnesota and um, a couple of things I want to talk to you because I, I met you when you first turned pro in 2015. Right. You've gotten really good in a, in a few years. I want to know about your training. I yeah. mean, like, I, I, how do you practice or train or tell me? Yeah. So actually, me and you here are at Vista. We're in Arizona right now. So uh, recently, pandemic, uh, I kind of moved down here to Arizona just to kind of play better, practice, train, and my girlfriend so we kind of got everything situated now so right now it's just pretty much diet and exercise and get those reps in um right now i'm on week three of my all-season program i'm kind of doing my thing and i'm working with distro strong right now so my thing is i'm working out constantly right now we got a peloton at home um it has every workout class you can kind of do or want to do at home too so now with disc golf strong we got stability core mm -hmm. all that stuff that helps with the throws so that's been very helpful for me and just diet i mean a lot of people watching this probably knows i was 200 pounds heavier than i am now so you got to stay in shape got to eat clean and you got to um, do all that stuff to kind of progress throughout the season so sometimes it's tough but you have to keep it going so yeah, and by the way, I'm a huge fan of death, uh, Disc Golf Strong. I was on the phone with Seth uh, right before I came here. And I remember I said I'm heading to Vegas? Yeah. I'm heading to work with Seth. Yeah, Seth's there. Yeah, so he Disc Golf Strong, reason. shout out. Yeah. Uh, wait, you were 200 pounds heavier yeah, or I you was, were 200 pounds? I was 365 pounds. So I am... Um, no, I wasn't even aware. I mean, I, <laughs> how did I not know this? Yeah, that, I, that I posted be. about it, so I'm surprised you haven't. But yeah, I was 200 pounds heavier. Um, I was 365-ish then got down to 180. So right now I'm at that 200 pound range, just kind of getting down to that 180, 175 range, then kind of tone up a little bit with muscle too, so. All right, well, we're gonna talk about their disc golf training, but just real briefly, how did you get, tell me about the weight loss. Yeah, just like I said, diet and exercise. Um, I play disc golf from- What does what what diet look like to you now? Diet, um, right now it's kind of, it used to be like keto, low carb, a little bit of that. Then now it's just kind of portion control. Uh, eat whatever, but kind of like, whatever I eat, make sure I get a little bit of exercise in and kind of burn it off too. So okay. just kind of pick and choose what I eat right now. So I'm a huge salad guy. I love salad and smoothies, just everything. And um, just chicken and protein. Right now I'm on the huge high protein thing or whatever. Just kind of fill me up a little bit less hungry. Gotcha, actually I'm doing the same thing right now too. Low carb, high protein, Right. It's part of my training. Uh, it works. You know, yeah, every, everybody's different. So what, yeah. you just got to find something that works for you too. And it's helpful for me, I think. So you mentioned doing reps with throws. What does reps look like? Is that on the course? Is it on the, uh, the field? Like, um, what, it's what do a you do? It goes a little bit of both. So right now I'm not playing as much as I um, want to. Just kind of get the body. You do this. I'm sure you know you do this for nine, ten months of the year. You just kind of want to relax and yeah, do that. So sure. you obviously want to keep playing to get the reps in. Um, some days I just do putting in the backyard. Next days I do field work. Then few days I go to the course and play competitive, play some leagues, play some double events, play a little bit of C tiers and B tiers. It just varies. Um, I, right now, uh, last off season, I worked on the sidearm, so I feel confident with the sidearm. Yeah, the sidearm uh, looks good. Yeah, we, we just got done playing some holes, so parked some holes. I was just like, wow, I've never done that before. So that was exciting. Just kind of challenging myself. Um, this off season is going to be putting and approaching. Oh, cool, yeah. Uh, two Later. things I struggled yep. down at the end of the year, this year and last year. So. Gotcha. So when you go putt in the backyard, do you have a routine or do you just go putt until you feel like you're done putting? Yeah, right now I'm doing like 20 minute sessions because I mean, short reps, a lot of them. It's kind of like working out. You want to get a little bit of reps in more quantity time. So quality versus quantity is how I look at it too. Because I mean, I spend an hour out there, I get bored once in a while. So. Right. What do you do when you need to putt and you don't want to? I just tell myself, like, there's always somebody going to try and outwork you. Just kind of have that mindset, yeah, that's too. True. I mean, a lot of, like what Simon and Paul's thing, like, I'm o I'm always working or outworking you. I remember seeing that poster in the, RV, in the Dismania RV, too. So Right, they're always outworking you. Yeah, they're always outworking you. There's always someone practicing harder, trying to get better than you. So my mentality is just like, I want to yeah. kind of be the best. I'm here to be the best, obviously. Um, but, yeah, just got a couple pieces to fix, and I think I'm right there. And you switched to MVP last year. Yep. 
And that's going, I mean, you, you had some good tournaments. Yeah. I mean, your, your rating kept similar. Right. Uh, what do you like most about them? Uh, just the family and like the technology behind it too. Um, just how the rim, the weight is distributed around the rim too. And pretty much every disc that you pick up is going to fly true characters right away. Cause sometimes you'll get a disc and be like, Oh, I got 10 of these discs and six of them are flippy. Six are yeah, that's overstable. So, it, but I mean, that's a mix and choose between both all the brands too so i just like the the family the technology and how they're thinking of it and just the feel too it's it's just different i wanted to kind of be different from everybody else too so i'm very happy and yeah. very fortunate to be with mvp right now too so i, I was laughing because I, I mean mvp i mean all the all the companies are good and they all right. got their pros and cons but uh, they had the consistency of mvp discs is something that when i was throwing them I never bought a photon that didn't fly like a photon. Right, ever. right, right, right. And that was really nice because when I, I could just like, I could order a mail order, I didn't have to look for a color or a right. run. I knew what I was getting, which right. is a, a tribute to, to Brad and Chad. And right. right now I'm rocking the Panic and then uh, the Reactor. The Reactor is just that mid-range neutral flight and I picked up seven throughout this year and last year and they're all very consistent and how I want them to fly too. So I've been really digging that and then the Panic's my go-to. Every shot, Heiser, straight shot sidearm everything it's just the, the feel and how mm. flat it is and how fast it can get up to speed with the flight gotcha now the, here's the big question i wanted to ask you because you had a, you had a great year right i mean make no mistake cashing at a major disc golf or a pro tour event right. it's huge is massive the, i mean these days like you gotta shoot like 10 20 to cash right, right. which is stupid um and you cashed at almost every event this year right until the end of the year right. and then you stopped cashing right now i looked at I, I i actually did my research and looked at the ratings it's not like you dropped, started shooting 980s. Right. You were just dropping from 1020 somethings to, to 1010 something. Right. Well, first off, why did that happen? Yeah, I think it's just kind of, um, I was talking to somebody about this because they asked me the same question. Uh, basically, it's just my mindset, I think, too. Just like the, you play disc golf nine months of the year and just kind of that time, just like, all right, slowly, it's almost off season, almost off season, almost off season. And just like, I'm missing one piece of the puzzle. So one round, I, I feel like I'm throwing the disc 1020, but then I'm averaging a thousand just because of the missed couple shots. So I'm just missing a few shots around too, and that adds up. And when you do that, it's just like USDGC this year, first round, couldn't do anything. Like nothing was in my way or just like I couldn't throw the disc. Round two, threw the disc so good, then just couldn't putt. Round three, everything felt right on topic. You're like everything was clicking, but I've already dug myself a hole where I couldn't battle back up too. Um, but yeah, I think it's just consistency and playing more. And like, that's why I, one of the reasons why I kind of live in Arizona now, because I can get the reps in whenever, wherever I want. I got the competition with all these guys here and just mentality. I just got to focus on what I've been struggling on too. And like, I watch a lot of YouTube. So watching myself, like, I know what I did wrong on that shot. I know what I did wrong. So it's just kind of like, how can I fix it? How can I create, create it? And just filming myself like, all right, your foot is a little off center, you're off the tee pad, you're not pulling through. So it's just kind of getting the reps in and just focusing on that too. And usually January 1st comes around and I set all my goals. Like this year, I think I had 17 or 18. I hit them all, all 16, except one was at USDGC, like the cash at USDGC. So I hit all my goals for the year by May. And I still have four or five, six months of the year. So it's just like, dang, I now I gotta reset my goals, but we're in the mid, stretch right, of the tour right. so that's i think i think i just gotta reevaluate and do something better about it too so yeah i think you can also you can you can set multiple tiered goals throughout the year right too. right so when you achieve a goal you can feel good about it but then i gotta take it to the next step yeah, yeah i agree I, I always i uh, i think there's a lot of things in life that, that applies to not just this goal right right um so it's but it sounds like so this year it's almost like a type of burnout right right so what do you why is that not gonna happen next year because I, I mean if, if this is your job right you can't be throwing away too much right, right? like right. so well, what what's gonna change next year i think it's just gonna be mentality just like make every shot count i think like i said burnt out towards the end of the year just like all right just another shot just another shot I just got tired and just like i don't know it's just weird like it's hard to describe but yeah i think the burnout factor is doing it and just kind of want to get home and just kind of focus on the off season just be done with it too but um, just more reps and more more time to practice and just focus on um, myself versus the course. I think that was the biggest thing 
um, lately is my mentality. I think that's my biggest winner from this year. Focus on yourself, not the course. Right. I, I, that's that's actually because I'm like very, you, very, you play against these guys. That's and like, very oh, deep for a disc golf. Right. You play against these guys and like, all right, I gotta get close to kind of, or he gets my stroke. I was like, it's me versus the course. And I just realized it like this year because like people say it constant, constant, but like I had, hadn't clicked. I hadn't clicked it. Or whatever, too. So that's, gotcha. like I said, I've been throwing the disc. Like I told you when we were playing today, I lead all almost top five, top 10 in fairway hits. I throw the disc so well that I just can't get up and down or just like psyching myself out. So oh, I just, that's another good one. Right. I'm glad you reminded me of that because the stats. People like will say, don't pay attention to ratings or stats. Right. And I think that's insane because when you look at stats, you right. could literally, like, it's not subjective anymore. Here's what I'm good at. Here's where I'm losing strokes. Right. So what was your week area? Uh, I was putting and approaching. So that's what this off season is going to be is putting and approaching. I got two or three baskets in the backyard. Then I'm going to head into the field that's within a mile of my house and just set it up and just kind of dial in from 100 feet, 200 feet around a tree, like, weird shot shapes like pen, uh, pen, pending or just around the tree or around a light pole just all those shots because you think of it it happens in every round like you're going to be behind yeah. a tree you're going to be behind this you're going to throw through a tight window you're going to it's going to happen we just don't practice it just because like oh we're not expecting to do it but when it happens no. you're like oh i wish i would have practiced that well we kind of talked about that too which right. is like like uh you can be I mean, you could be 85% from 150 feet, which is like so good, you don't even think about right. it. Like it's 85%, but when your competition's 92%, that's a stroke around. Right. That's four strokes a weekend in one area. And that could be cashing versus not cashing. Right. Or that could and be winning so, versus not winning. So even though you're good at it, you still need to put it in perspective right. what, what what actually is good at it compared to the field. Right. And, right. and you, so you're, I mean, I mean, you're, well, you're, uh, you're up and down shots and putting this to weak area of your game. Right. You're thousand rated in that area. Right. It's still high level. Right. But it's, just it's imagine not, if it was 1020, 1030, 1040, like that's easy. That's And this is what you mean by focus on yourself, not the course right. as much. Because we're not even talking about the course. We're talking about your own right. game. It's like I know how to do it. Yeah. My mind has knows how to do it. It's me executing it. That's super smart. Right. Yeah, this is why I am, as I travel around getting ready to smash all the kids, <laughs> all of them. I, by the way, I'm fine, everybody. You're yes. fine. You're good. It's true. <laughs> I'm only, Half your age. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, now I'm going to have to edit out the tears. <laughs> no, I, but I, I, as I go compete against the kids on tour next year, I'm, I'm also training with them yeah. because you always have something to learn. So you're one of the, the, the high ledge level top right. players in the entire world. And so I played around with you and I learned stuff today. Right. Like I learned from everybody. And so I'm going to keep playing with the best in the world like Jordan Castro. How about that for a smooth segue? Yeah, that was good. All right. Hey, thanks, you guys. Uh, subscribe, like, hit the bell, all that fun stuff. And make sure you follow Jordan on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So you can just search it and it'll pop up. Yeah. So make sure you follow Jordan Castro as well. Root for him next year. And uh, buy MVP this. And thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah. It's awesome, man. Yeah.